Hello and uh, welcome one and all. Today we will go over some questions and requests I have received on Airflow. They vary in nature, so I will try and group the related topics together. We have covered the Airflow installation on Docker by building a custom image and we utilize this image in a Docker Compose file. First question is related to the custom image and installation of the extra libraries. Docker Compose gives us the option to install libraries via pip command, so why not utilize this feature? This feature is only there for testing purposes. Even Airflow recommends building a custom image when we need to add extra functionality to it. The list of libraries will grow as we add more functionality to Airflow. As you can see on the screen, the list of libraries is growing as I am adding additional libraries to it. In this instance, we are installing a few new libraries such as Airbyte and dbt. So the recommended practice is to build a custom image whenever you need to add additional libraries. At the time of this recording, we are using Apache Airflow version 2.5.3 and we are going to go ahead and build this image. If you are using a different version, then syntax and some of the functionality may change. We will cover an example of this when we go over the Docker Compose file for Airflow version 2.5.3. Let's go ahead and build this custom image and we will use this in our Docker Compose file. Following on the installation trend, the second question is around Docker file itself. We have this Docker file where we extend the base Airflow image. The Docker file does not have any extension to it. This was one of the questions as someone had an extension to this file and if your file extensions are hidden and you try to build with this file then this will result in an error. Another question related to the installation process is how do we delete the predefined or example DAGs in Airflow? The example DAGs clutter the UI and when you develop your own DAGs you have to scroll down to locate your DAG. This is rather simple we can disable them in our docker compose file. Make sure to stop the containers with docker compose down command. Make our changes to the docker compose file and start the containers again. This should remove the sample DAGs upon the launch of the Airflow web server. We have another follow up question that is regarding the email notification in Airflow. How do we configure email and use it in our DAGs to send notifications upon failures? The answer to this question is twofold. First we need to configure the SMTP server in the Airflow settings. Then we need to update our DAG to use the email feature. We configure the SMTP settings in the Airflow.cfg file. I have this file saved under the config folder in the installation directory and we will mount this file to the docker container via docker compose file. So let's open this file and search for smtp. In the email section, we only leave the email backend enabled and comment out rest of the options. And under smtp section, we provide our smtp server, user and password along with the port. These credentials will be used to log into the SMTP server and send emails. This goes without saying that we will need an SMTP server or simple mail transfer protocol server up and running. You can use Google or set up a local SMTP server with HMail server. We'll go ahead and save our changes to the CFG file. In the Docker Compose file, under the volume section, we mount this file to the opt slash airflow folder. Under the volume section, we are also mounting the dbt folder and dbt profile file to our docker containers. If you are working with airflow version 2.3 or lower, then the following settings on line 58 is different in those versions. It has been changed from airflow underscore core to airflow underscore database. This is the official YAML file from the Airflow's website for the version 2.5.3. Anyways, let's start the Airflow container with docker compose up command. This will start the containers 
and we can test our email configurations. While the containers are starting, let's review a simple tag that utilizes the email functionality. In the DAG, we define the email and set the email on failure flag to true. This is enough to send emails on failures. However, we build this DAG for testing purposes. So in the body of the DAG, we use the email operator to send an email. Our Airflow server is up. We can log in and test the email functionality. As you can see, we only see a handful of DAGs in the UI. We have removed the example DAGs that come with Airflow, and this is our DAG to test the email. Before triggering the DAG, I will bring up my email client and open the inbox that will be receiving the emails from Airflow. Let's head back to the web server and trigger the email DAG. It is queued. Let's refresh to see its status. It ran successfully. If you are to refresh our inbox, we should see an email from Airflow and Airflow alert as the subject. We have successfully sent an email from Airflow using our SMTP server. In our DAGs, if we set the email on failure to true and provide an email address, then on failures, an email will be sent to the inbox. So this is how we configure email alerts in Airflow. Let's cover one more topic, and this is a big one. This is about Airflow's usage. Should Airflow only be used as an orchestrator or we carry out task execution in Airflow? This is a common discussion in the Airflow community, whether to use Airflow as only a task orchestration system or both as an orchestration system as well as task execution system since many DAGs are written with Bash or Python operator, which execute the work within the same Python runtime as the Airflow. Opponents or the purists argue that Airflow should only be used as a task triggering system and suggest no actual work should be done inside Airflow itself. Instead, all work should be offloaded to a system intended for dealing with data, such as a database, or system like Apache Spark, Flink, or Kafka. Let's explore both of these options. First option is to orchestrate and execute the job on the Airflow. We have seen a flavor of this in the previous Airflow video. A classic example is ETL. We extract the data from SQL Server, perform some transformations on it, and load it to Postgres database. This is a common task in Airflow. The data is transferred between two systems and with some transformations in between. In the Airflow ecosystem, this has led to development of many such source to target operators. For example, we have the MySQL to Google Cloud Storage operator, SFTP to S3 operator, and simple HTTP operator. Therefore, there's a use case of orchestrating and executing the jobs in the Airflow ecosystem. However, we must take the system's resources in mind while developing this sort of a task. Since these operators keep the intermediate results in memory, in the ETL case, the data frame returned from the database is kept in memory. Therefore, it must fit into the system's available memory. So think wisely about the memory implications when running very large queries, because a very large result set could potentially drain the available memory on the Airflow machine I would advise only to execute small to medium sized data loads on Airflow and keep the system resources in mind. On the other hand, if you want to execute workflows in Apache Airflow, then I would advise to set up Airflow across multiple machine as a cluster. So let's discuss the Airflow setup briefly. Normally, when we start with Airflow, we will have a single node Airflow setup. A simple instance of Apache Airflow involves putting all services on a single node like the one you see on screen. In this setup, it's easy for a resource intensive job to consume all the system resources. And this will render the Airflow in an unusable state. However, in a cluster setup, you're running tasks in a distributed environment. If you have a workflow with the several memory intensive tasks, then the tasks are executed on a distributed system, meaning we have more resources available to us 
to complete the task. We can scale the cluster horizontally and distribute the processing by adding more executor nodes to the cluster and allowing those nodes to take the load off of existing nodes. Now let's discuss it from the orchestration only point of view. This was the original purpose of Airflow at its inception, to schedule any type of workflow. Airflow will start the job and wait for it to complete. The idea is that there should be a strong separation between orchestration and execution, which we can achieve by Airflow starting the job and waiting for the completion from the data processing framework that is performing the actual work. It runs the job on a scheduler or ad hoc basis, but the actual computation or data processing happens in an external system. This holds true if you have a single node Airflow setup with limited resources. Let's take a look at orchestration only example. We have a DAG here, and in this DAG, we trigger an Airbyte data sync. Airbyte syncs the data between SQL Server and Postgres database. If you want to learn more about Airbyte or data sync or data sync setup, then check out my video on Airbyte. I will leave the link in the description below. This is the extract and load or EL part of the ETL pipeline. We schedule this workflow with Airflow and it is triggered on schedule. Airflow triggers this job. However, the actual data movement happens in the Airbyte environment. Airflow merely triggers it. Once the data sync is complete, we trigger a SQL job that joins multiple tables and creates a final table with selected columns. Airflow triggers the SQL job. However, the database is performing the actual work. So this is an orchestration only example. We can place the SQL job part with another framework we have recently covered in the shape of dbt. We extract and load the data with Airbyte and then trigger dbt once the data set is complete to transform the data in the Postgres database. More to come on this. So ultimately, it depends on your setup, how you should use Airflow. If you're working with constraint of a single node, then it should definitely be used as an orchestrator only. This is the original intention of the system and it is very proficient in it. However, if you want to perform computations within the Airflow runtime environment using Python, then scale your setup horizontally before you throw resource intensive jobs at it. This is all I wanted to cover in this session. I hope you find it useful. If you have a comment or a question, post it below. This is all on Airflow for now.